The Jeanne d'Arc of the provincial government, the pillar of the provincial government, and the lady of the provincial government. Who is the person behind these resplendent titles? It is none other than Chong Chonghua. She calls herself an ordinary lady, neither a hero nor an elite. Her ordinary character made her the history of the provincial government that lasted 27 years. Independence is serving my country, and that is what I can do. As Pekbom said, Chung was one of the Koreans who served the country for independence. Let us explore the extraordinary history of the independence movement written by an ordinary woman. Kim Sun-hyun, granddaughter of Chung Jung-hwa, organized her grandmother's belongings. She found from Chung's belongings why an ordinary lady, Chung, became a member of the provincial government. One of the greatest writers at the time, and the last government officer of the Tehan Empire, he met Chung as a daughter-in-law when she was only 10 years old. 워낙 어렸을 때 결혼을 하셨기 때문에 사실 증조부님이 시아버지라기보다는 아버지에 가깝죠. 많이 가르쳐 주시고 또 굉장히 예뻐하셨다고 그래요. 증조부님의 영향 많이 받으셨던 것 같고요. In 1919, it was a big shock for a young girl, Chung, to hear that her husband and father-in-law fled the country, leaving their family behind. Kim Gajin abandoned his government position as the country fell fought against the Japanese Empire, forming Chuson Minjok Tedongdan, and joined the provincial government in Shanghai with his son, leaving their country. She gets on a night train to Uiju by herself to find her husband and father-in-law and she renamed herself Sudang Chong Chong Hua with a strong will to find her way. It was when she was 20. In 1920, Sudang joined the provincial government in Shanghai, which made her heart beat just by hearing its name. However, the reality was miserable and people could not eat properly. Chong Jung-hwa volunteered to support the falling provincial government. She could not disregard Dong Nong, who tried hard to raise funds for independence. With gifted courage and help from intelligence agents, she successfully completed the six secret missions, receiving praise for her achievements. However, she remembered a moment that moved her heart rather than telling her heroic exploits. It was a conversation with Yi Zhe-chang, whom she met on a boat in the Amnok River. Unknown sacrifices of people who had nothing and who had no education. Sudang realizes that independence can be made by people with all different roles that transcend status. Some resisted with bombs, some with guns and knives, some with a single pen. Chong Jung-hwa decided to take charge of the support for the provincial government. And here is an item that symbolizes her invisible sacrifice. She used this burner when she cooked for Pek Bum, who starved like a homeless, and for members of the provincial government on the way to flee. 
and she was there when Seogu Lee Dong-ryong and Lady Choi Jun-ne, the wife of Big Bum Kim Gu, passed away. She also supported the birth of the grandson of Udang, Lee Hui-young. She was there at all the moments of the history of the provincial government from birth to death. In 1937, with the outbreak of the Shino-Japanese War, the provincial government fled across the continent. With Japan on the brink of defeat, the provincial government accelerated its goal of independence. Kim Lee-han was appointed as chief accounting officer of the general headquarters of the Korean Liberation Army, and Chung participated in the Korea Revolutionary Female Union the Korean Women's Patriotic Association. The couple put their final efforts for independence as mid-level members of the provincial government. Finally, the moment they had been waiting for arrived. She first visited the grave of her father-in-law. Kim Ga-jin died after sacrificing his life for the independence movement in a foreign land after exile in his old age. She learned the meaning of her motherland in tears. While she spent 27 years advocating for the country's independence, it was different from what she expected. The country was divided, and she got separated from her husband, who was kidnapped to North Korea. Even suffering from being imprisoned for treason, she never stopped what she had to do for the country. The Changgang Diary, written by Chung, is a must-read for understanding the history of the independence movement. It is the extraordinary Sudang who kept her convictions even in the years when people betrayed their country under the pressure of the Japanese Empire. Being born in the years of a lost country, going through the years of the provincial government, and living through the birth and the turbulent years of the Republic of Korea, Chong Jung Hwa died at 91 in her motherland. In 2006, Chong's son, Kim Ja Dong, visits Pyongyang with a picture of his mother. He put the picture of Chong at the cemetery tomb of his father, Kim Lee Han. The couple, who spent their whole life for independence, finally meet 56 years after their separation. Including Kim Ga Jin's grave in China, and they are all buried in different places. It is a mission left for us. With the sacrifice of Sudang, who worked behind the scenes and fulfilled her role, the provincial government could become the longest running government for the independence movement in history. The provincial government is the cornerstone of today's Korea, and we shall remember the remarkable sacrifices of these ordinary people who made history continue. Thank you.